Willkommen zum aktuellen Gold Invest Interview. Auf unserer fortlaufenden Suche nach vielversprechenden Rohstoffunternehmen sind wir auf eine australische Goldgesellschaft gestoßen, die über großes Potenzial zu verfügen scheint. Wir sprechen heute mit Executive Chairman Simon Rill von DeGray Mining, um uns von ihm erklären zu lassen, warum sein Unternehmen für uns interessant sein könnte. Simon, welcome. As this is our first introduction of the Gray to our audience, please tell us a bit about the, the team behind the Gray. Uh, thanks, Bjorn. Uh, look, uh, the Gray. Uh, I've been involved with the company since late 2013, when uh, I think it's fair to say the market in Australia for junior explorers was difficult, and the company at the time was uh, was struggling. So uh, myself and a couple of colleagues have. Uh, kept it alive through some difficult times since then. Um, we, in February of 2016, we just completed a, a small capital raising through a rights issue, uh, and that resulted in, um, we have a series of tenements that had previously been joint ventured out where the companies had not earned their interest. And in February of 2016, the uh, tenements were effectively handed back to De Grey. We had some capital in the bank and uh, we were able to access a gentleman by the name of Mr. Andy Beckwith, who uh, is a geologist. Andy had a good look at the project and uh, at our request and advised the board at the time that uh, he felt that there was uh, some substance in this project and that it had probably been forgotten in many ways in the marketplace, uh, whereby the initial discovery was made in 2003. There was a lot of drilling in 2004, and really there had not been a lot of information about the, the uh, project on a gold, from the gold perspective since 2004. It was joint ventured out in 2007, 2008, and had not been seen properly by De Grey until Andy had a look at it. Andy has a history, uh, he's a gold geologist. He worked for many years as the CEO of West Gold, where he was responsible for uh, significant gold discoveries. Uh, I don't know the exact figure, but I believe it's in the millions of ounces. Uh, okay. He's also brought on board a gentleman by the name of Philip Tornatora. Phil has been involved with uh, Galaxy, which is a lithium project, and also Northern Star, where he was also responsible for the discovery of uh, millions of uh, ounces. So both of those uh, companies, as I understand it, owe a debt of gratitude to both Phil and Andy, and uh, we're very lucky to have two senior geologists on board. Um, we have been able to handle the project to date with senior geologists whereby most of the work to date has been geological, but we are in a transition stage as well as we move into more project studies and we're looking at the team around us and uh, how best to beef up both the board and the team in terms of uh, resources and bringing some of the different disciplines onto the table, such as uh, obviously metallurgy. We have a, a consultant metallurgist working with us at the moment. And probably more importantly, maybe as importantly, you don't want to upset the different disciplines, <laughs> but as importantly, a mining engineer as well, in that the project will be a multiple pit project. We have a range of strip ratios and uh, mining engineering will start to become uh, more important as we move forward project studies. Mm. So let's get to the project then. Um, tell us a bit. What is the the project? Um, give us a short summary. Okay, we are calling the project the Pilbara Gold Project. Uh, it is the amalgamation of the Turner River Project, which De Grey Mining has had since 2003, and the Indy Project, which is contiguous with our tenements and to moving towards the west of our tenements, the southwest of our tenements. The two projects combined, we, we think one plus one equals three in this situation. Uh, both projects uh, need each other. At the moment, the project is just over a million ounces. Mm -hmm. The grades of the project, the million ounces, it's 18 and a half million tonnes at 
uh, 1.9 grams per ton overall. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, it's a relatively, well, it's a, it's a lower grade open pit uh, scenario whereby the mineralization across all pits commence, commences at surface and all pits are open at depth. So we can't say that we will be able to go underground, but certainly on the three of the four pits, we also believe there is underground potential as well. So the project is basically, it's a million ounce project. We're looking at an open pit scenario to start the project off. We have just uh, completed a scoping study on the project, which has shown pro- positive economics. The uh, scoping study at this at the stage of sign off was uh, showing a five-year mine life at a million tonnes per annum. That, in the first instance, was possibly a bit disappointing given the size of the resource. The 18.5 million tonnes is only coming to 5 million tonnes recoverable. Uh, But there were some reasons for that. Um, The main one being that uh, there's been quite a bit of deep drilling which shows up as inferred resources that uh, again we just haven't done enough work on it to show the underground potential of it so that's one reason why the uh, the um, uh, conversion of resources to recoverable resources a bit lower than we would like Um, equally it indicates that we needed to find more resources and we have got that uh, well underway we've just completed uh, what we would call a successful drilling program at what was previously an exploration target, the mm-hmm. Molina resource target. Um, we've announced those results uh, last week um, and you know, we're showing very, very good widths of intersections. It depends what you're after, if you want grade, if you want width, uh, the best intersection is probably 37 metres at 1.7 grams per tonne, but there are also very good intersections such as 10 metres at 6 grams per tonne. So we're showing good mineralisation throughout Molina. That should come forward in the next few weeks as a uh, as a resource in uh, certainly in the inferred category, possibly in the indicator of the inferred category. Um, we also have another resource on the Indy project that had previously been reported as a as a Jork 2004 resource. We haven't reported it as a Jork 2012 resource. But at Jork 2004, it was somewhere between 30 to 40,000 ounces at 2.7 grams per tonne. Mm. So we're just having to pull apart some of the additional information that we have there and uh, you know, have our resource geologists sign off on that. So we believe the combination of Molina and also Taurana was that additional resource mm. will get us very close, if not two two years additional mine life in addition there is a uh, range river or the indy project was previously operated as a heap leach project back in 2007 2008 and there is the remnants of well it's not the remnants but there's a remaining uh, ore body that is the heap leach pad that has uh, circa 850,000 tonnes of ore on it that we've recently released uh, drill hole results on it to try and check what sort of grade is there. It will be a low grade resource. We haven't yet announced it, Um, but look, it'll be, you know, somewhere probably just underneath one gram per tonne. So there'll be another 20 to 25,000 ounces on that on that heap leach pad. Uh, the beauty of it is that it's obviously it's been mined, milled, crushed. It's really ready to go straight into a, uh, a leach processing and should leach very, very well. So um, how we use that in a, uh, in a process plant planning into the future, I guess our, our thought process is it will be used as commissioning or but also probably as rainy day or we do have uh, singular rain events in the region. We have rivers that for the most of the year are, are very dry and for some part of the year they have trickles going through them and once every two, three, four years they might become a torrent. So there are times when there might be uh, pits that are cut off 
in which case we have a spare uh, set of ore there that can be easily fed into the mill as well. So if I understand it correctly, it sounds very interesting. You have that linear ounce resource, you have possible um, additional resources that you already know about but haven't announced yet. Or, and uh, but I'm prepared, to, I'm prepared to say probable additional resources, but I do need to be careful of uh, what the standards over here allow us to say. But we have a high level of confidence they are going to convert to resources, yes. Okay, very interesting. And uh, that means with a bit or with a lot of more work, uh, there's a lot of potential to beef up your numbers, um, get the mine life up to seven years or, or more. Um, so what after we heard of all that, what you've already done or what you already know about the project, what are the next steps then? Well, what kind of news can we expect in the future? Uh, the short term future, um, we obviously have, we, we are assessing the additional resources as we've just discussed. Those, uh, assuming they do convert to resources, those announcements should be through in the next uh, two to three weeks, and I think we've indicated that to the market uh, at the moment. There are outstanding drill results uh, still to come. Uh, the main drilling that we've just completed was on the Molina project, which we referred, but there was also some drilling that was uh, looking on extensions of existing uh, pits and resources. That will be uh, coming through in the next uh, two to three weeks as well. We've had some diamond drilling across all of the pits to get some uh, fresh core for metallurgical work. The uh, metallurgical work is important, but the scoping study that we have just concluded, the, the major pit, which is our Wingina pit, shows that it leaches uh, very quickly. Uh, it's an oxide resource and will uh, shows recoveries of 95%. So we're very comfortable the oxides across the uh, project will recover to 90 to 95%. We have some fresh rock at one of our major pits, particularly the Withnal resource. We used a recovery of 80% uh, for that. And previous metallurgical work that was done back in 2006 would seem to be, give us a high level of confidence that 80% was very, very achievable. We, of course, would like to improve that and we believe we will get that somewhere above 85% with uh, metallurgical work. And that's significant from our uh, pit optimization work, our mine planning work, our scheduling work, but also as to whether that pit in particular, it will improve its uh, the chances of going underground as well. So there'll be some metallurgical uh, results coming through. We will move into pre-feasibility study work that will include those additional resources, um, <clears throat> pardon me, and it will also uh, include the uh, updated uh, metallurgical work and cer certainly the confirmed metallurgical work, but hopefully the improved metallurgical work, but also the optimised metallurgical work because there are uh, in some areas, uh, reagent consumption is probably a bit higher than maybe it needs to be. Uh, power and ultrafine grinding uh, is a significant trade-off as well. So um, that will feed into a pre-feasibility study work that uh, will hopefully be released, uh, those results, sometime before the end of the calendar year. Mm. So it sounds like a lot of uh, work going on uh, over the remainder of the year. Um, so can you sum up for our audience why, in your personal opinion, uh, now might be a good time to have a closer look at an investment uh, into grey mining? Yes, and uh, again, one needs to be careful about how one says this. Uh, but uh, look, we, we have a market capitalization of about $8 million and we've got over a million ounces in the ground. So certainly we believe we are, are very undervalued, highly undervalued. The market, the team that we have has achieved an enormous amount since February of 2016. Uh, and I think we deserve some credit for that, that maybe the market isn't giving us. Um, you won't find many other million ounce uh, gold development stories um, at that sort of valuation. And let's just recognise it's a million ounces 
and growing. We are very comfortable that that resource will be growing. And I think something that perhaps we've missed, missed out actually, Bjorn, before the mm -hmm. summary is that uh, we have an enormous amount of exploration potential across that tenement. We have two major shear zones that have shown that they are mineralised. Um, we've basically got 160 kilometres of shear zone, which if you want to come up with an, uh, a concept, it's uh, basically between Kalgoorlie and Laverton in one of the most uh, gold endowed regions in the world, Kalgoorlie to Laverton, and they work on shear zones uh, very often in that region. Ours, we've virtually barely scratched the surface across that shear zone area. The shear zones where it's been drilled has tended to be where it has outcropped. Um, it's a little bit like the Loch Ness Monster, or it's sort of it's up and down. So in areas where it's not outcropping, it's been under drilled. And yet there are tantalising drill results in some of those areas that have not really been followed up. So we're very, very confident of further discoveries in that region. I should just quickly add that we have uh, other opportunities. And whilst we're focusing on gold, the market is not giving us value. We have a zinc resource that the last time we uh, referred to it in an ASX announcement, we had three and a half million tonnes of zinc equivalent, which is one way of uh, measuring these things, three and a half million tonnes of, it was 8.9% zinc equivalent in third resource on our tenement package. Uh, the zinc price has changed since then, so that zinc equivalent does uh, uh, move up and down depending on the uh, range of different commodity values. That's basically a, a zinc silver lead resource with some gold in it. We have also announced we've got a seven kilometre pegmatite trend on greenstone belt in, in our tenement package. And the interesting thing there is that that pegmatite trend, we've shown that we have lithium soil samples across that trend and we're 30 kilometres from the Pilgangura projects, which are the two major projects in the Pilbara that are under development. So uh, again, the market's not giving us any credit for that. And the, the lithium story obviously remains strong uh, in, in the Australian market and in the global market as well. So uh, given our proximity to, uh, to Pilgangura, in a way, you'd be surprised if there wasn't uh, yeah. if there wasn't bodgermine in there. So uh, that is untested at this stage. So there there is hidden value uh, across uh, within our tenement package as well. That again, we don't think the market is giving us value for. I suppose the final thing we've just recently been at Diggers and Dealers in Kalgoorlie, the the annual mining conference in Western Australia, and. Um, Kim Mining won the uh, award for the best development story. We haven't really, we don't think the market is is particularly aware of us at the at the moment, and we don't think we're far behind Kim Mining. We we did have a very good uh, reception from the uh, the people that we uh, spoke to about our development story. So I think that's probably it in a nutshell. There's lots of hidden value with what we have, but uh, we're a very cheap million ounce. Uh, uh, resource. Uh, let me say that amongst that million ounce of resource, it is mainly in measured and indicated. So a lot of it has been drilled out. The resource that is presenting to the mill under our scoping study uh, is mainly, is almost predominantly in measured and indicated. Okay. Uh, and it presents at 2.1 grams per tonne. So it's a reasonable grade going to the mill at that level. Um, I guess, and I, to be honest, to, to be open and honest to your uh, to your viewers, that uh, the negatives that probably hang over us is that we have two halves of a project and we need to acquire one half of the project from some Chinese vendors. We have a good relationship with them. The acquisition price is is reasonable given what we have acquired. But the market does see that as a negative and asks the question, well, how are you going to acquire that? We have to acquire it. It's a 15 million Australian dollar acquisition price. Mm -hmm. We have at the moment until July 24, 2018 to acquire that. Um, 
we believe we will get some assistance from the Chinese moving forward, but we can't guarantee that because that's uh, if we if we had that confirmed, we would have announced it by now. But we believe that they will be of assistance because uh, uh, they've, they're proving to be good partners at the moment. They understand the magnitude of what we're trying to uh, pull off. Uh, they, under they seem to understand that the two projects need each other and they seem very supportive of where we are trying to head. So it, it can be seen a ne as a negative when you're looking at it from the outside in. Uh, inside, we're quite comfortable that we will get uh, uh, perhaps the concessions that we might need moving forward there. Okay. Thank you. That certainly is a comprehensive overview of what you're trying to do and doing. Um, we'll be sure to talk to you uh, at a later point again. Thank you. Thank okay. you, Simon. Thank you, Bjorn. Thank you.